Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. The power of the Holy Spirit is being revealed in a new upshift. In fact, that's the title of Lana Heitley's new book. She's an international ministry to women. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. On today's show, we have a live in-studio guest. Uh, uh, apparently, I've known this woman a long time, but recently been reacquainted with Lana Heitley, who is a missionary of sorts for Jesus Christ, especially ministering in women's conferences, picture thousands of women overseas, and she's been to over 100 countries. Lana is now the new author of this book, Upshift, the Holy Spirit's Unfathomable Power Revealed. Upshift, available everywhere. Welcome, Lana, to the program. How are you today? I'm wonderful, thank you for having me. So I'm excited about this new book. We'll get to that in a few minutes, but uh, briefly introduce uh, your ministry, uh, Women with a Mission. It is, I take teams of women around the world and we teach and train women, uh, depending on the country, the culture, and about how to influence their nation for the Lord. That's what I do women influencing their nation for the Lord. I assume they're influencing men too. Of course, families. <laughs> families, <laughs> families are important, yes they are. That, that's exciting, so so you, you travel and you do women's conferences? We do, we travel um, several months a year and uh, depending on what the need is, what the, um, I will say the culture will allow, we go and train women to pray, how to raise families, how to get into the word, how to witness, how to worship, how to, you know, many things about prayer. We do that. So this is kind of a, also an evangelistic missionary work or, or are you mainly in churches? We do both. Yeah. It depends on the country again. For example, in the Philippines, we do a lot of training, but we do crusades at night. So we get a chance to preach and teach and pray for the sick, see miracles and establish churches. And we've established, been a partner to establishing over 5,000 churches in the last 30 years. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it uh, is. So you've done it, over 30 years of ministry. You started with your dad back in the day. How did that get started? I did, well, my father, had never won a soul to the Lord and he got saved late in life. And he heard about a missionary came through and said, you know, Les, that was his name. If you would take your violin to the Philippines, we could win thousands for the Lord. That's what he did. He went, what? And he went and he did. What? Uh, yeah, he did. With Started, a violin. Yes, played music and taught people how to play the violin and uh, the guitar, he also played the guitar, and um, actually taught many pastors and raised up a lot of people and stayed there until he was 87 years old. And he invited you on a tag along. Yes, he did. He said, <laughs> he said, actually, I was there in 1986 when the revolution came, when Marcos was taken out oh and the rebellion. Gosh. I was supposed to be there two weeks and I ended up being there a whole month, lost 13 pounds and preached my heart out. It was a fun thing. What? Yeah, it was oh a my fun gosh. experience. That's how I started. So you got hooked. I got hooked. <laughs> and you came back to America and you founded this organization, Women With A Mission. It's it's now a 501c3 charity. It is. Mm -hmm. uh, how is it organized or, or who do you team up with? Well, it's kind of a long story, but I'm gonna try to, my husband used to be a CEO of a large tech company and he would move about every three or four years uh, depending on how successful the company was. And I would meet powerful women in all kinds of states. And I used to say, Lord, how come I can't settle down somewhere? But when I started this ministry, I knew who to call. I called those women that I had met yeah. in all the states and that's how we started. That is exciting. So now you hit, uh, you've been in over a hundred countries. I have. Uh, before the COVID crisis really limited your travel, uh, how many countries or conferences were you doing per, per year? Oh my, again, depending. Uh, sometimes we'd go clear around the world, country to country to country, depending on the invitations, the availability of teams, but normally four to five countries a year. 
That is exciting. Now you have this new book, Upshift, The Holy Spirit's Unfathomable Power Revealed. We're gonna spend some time going through some of your missionary stories of the power encounters of the Holy Spirits. Okay. Uh, I'm already getting goosebumps just thinking about <laughs> hearing you tell miracle stories from the mission field. Uh, give us a, an overview of the book. Okay, the overview of the book is, um, it's wild. It's stories that, that my mission pastor says are unsanitized. In other words, we told what really happened, how the enemy came in, how the Holy Spirit came in and uh, gave us strategy how to overcome. And so we had great, uh, powerful ministries, deliverances. Um, we had some women that were demonized that we had to face down many times. So these stories, but not only that, there's stories about uh, Miracles over nature. Over nature? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, Jesus did miracles over nature. He walked on water, for example. He changed water to wine. Right. You've you ever seen something crazy like that? I saw something pretty nice like that. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was actually my first year in the Philippines. We were in an area that was kind of intimidated by what they call the NPA, New People's Army, which was trying to revolt in the Philippines. And so they sent me out one day to go to a little fishing village and give the gospel. And the way we would do that is we'd go out and do a little, maybe a skit, we get the people's attention, and then we'd give them a gospel story and invite them to come to Jesus. So we're there and nobody's paying any attention to me. I'm giving this story, I'm doing this thing. But I noticed a man, which they used to call, uh, you know, the there would be like a barangay captain over certain areas. And I noticed everybody was looking at him in the village while they were playing their cards and smoking their cigarettes. They were looking at me and then looking at him. Uh -oh. And I figured he's got the answer. You wanna hear the answer? What? <laughs> I went over and I said to him, you know, God sent me clear from America to teach you and to give you good things about God. He wants to do something for you. What can I pray about today? And he said, we're very poor, we have no fish, we're hungry and we need fish. So I said, well, if I pray and God brings in fish, will you call these folks I'm with and set up a Bible study? And he said, yes, sure. So I prayed, <laughs> I got, you know, bold, the spirit of the Lord, I, oh God, bring the fish, let, you know how you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And prayed that, and so we, we left, and I got a letter from the Philippines two weeks later that the next day they had an abundance of fish and it never stopped, so they started a Bible study oh, there. Oh, thank God, <laughs> thank God, I'm excited. Okay, <laughs> yeah. let's take another short break. When we come back, more missionary stories with Lana Heitley. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. If you've watched our program, you know that we stand with Israel as God's chosen people. We need you to sign a petition today. Why? Because did you know that even as Iran is now developing 800 mile range cruise missiles, could be nuclear tip very soon, that our US Congress has now three brand new freshman Congresswomen, we call them the three anti-Semitic musketeers, Ocasio-Cortez and two Muslims, Talib and Omar. And they are influencing Nancy Pelosi to have the most anti-Semitic Congress in years. We need to stand with our friends in Israel and that's why we're asking you to sign a petition. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Don't divide Jerusalem, stand with Israel and stand up to the United Nations. We will fax it to the Congress, but you need to sign today. Take a stand, visit PrayInJesusName.org and sign our petition today. I'm Dr. Chaps. We're offering a flash sale on all of our teaching products when you visit PrayInJesusName.org, click on the online bookstore, and all of our products are now 50% off while supplies last this month only. But in addition to that, we're offering a spiritual growth pack with four of our best DVDs in one package, starting with how to have an effective prayer life, how to have an excellent marriage, real Christianity in an unreal world with Vince Dacchioli, and how to become an effective Christian activist. You can grow in your spiritual life with all four of these DVD products, normally $30 each. That's $120 value for half price, for just $60 and we'll throw in the shipping. So call us right now at 866-Obey-God and say, I want the spiritual growth pack. I want those four DVDs for just $60 
Call us right now for this special offer at 866-Obey-God. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Lana Heitley, author of this new book, Upshift. It's kind of like Uplift, but it's Upshift, The Holy Spirit's Unfathomable Power Revealed. Why the word power in the title? Because everything that's happened in these stories are very powerful. They okay. just couldn't have happened in a natural way. So give us another country and another story from the book. Okay, well, I can talk about 2020. Uh, yeah. Okay, so Easter Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday, I'm really down, I'm thinking there's no, you know, it's COVID, there's no pastor's meetings, there's no church, there's no worship, and I was really down. And so I thought, Lord, this is your day. This is your day, and yet we can't even get together. So I turned on the television or um, and watched a little bit of church online, and then I went on the computer. And before I knew it, I was worshiping, I was hearing good word, my faith was increased, and then I remembered how the Lord brought life in one of our trips. And I wrote about how we had a resurrection in India. Oh, what, what year was that? Book. When was that? That was probably 2001. And when you say resurrection, what do you mean? So we have one of our team members is preaching to this open crowd, well it has the building, the building over it, open crowd of women, and suddenly, and, and several of us were under a cool tree because it was a hot day, suddenly a woman in the right hand side towards the back screamed and fell to the floor. And we heard it, but we just didn't pay much attention. They carried her out, they put her under a tree. Oh my gosh. A few months later, they ran and said, Lana, she's died, this woman has died, there's a doctor here, and she says she's died. So of course, I got up, we ran over. So she wasn't under the tree for all that time? Oh yes, she was. The woman's under the tree dead. Oh my gosh. All that time. So we run over, and something, you know, that Holy Spirit that comes and says, not on my watch. Yeah. So I just said, you have no legal right here, you enemy, you take your hands off her. Started praying loudly, and my friend joined me. And within a few seconds, the woman made a <laughs> cough, started coughing, and actually she was blue when we went over. And she made a cough and she got her breath and the doctor helped her, and that night she was in service. So oh we had a, my gosh. a modern day resurrection. And now you said a few minutes later, I heard a few months later. But oh no, no, it's, no, no, no. But, but this is still I a, a tremendous said, miracle. I may have said months, but it was minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so so you, you believe she was raised from the dead, just oh, like I know Jesus? She, I know she was, because the doctor was there. The woman doctor said it was a miracle. She was not breathing, yeah. she had no breath, and she was dead. She has no heartbeat, she was feeling no heartbeat, and she came back to life. Thank God, yeah. thank God, that's the power of God. It's the power it, of the resurrection, for what, sure. Usually, and I'm told, and I've seen some miracles in my life, but they always point to the gospel message so people can come to Jesus. What did you preach that night? knowing that God had done a miracle. Well, we talked about the resurrection, of course, you know, because many people overseas don't believe in the resurrection. They believe in Jesus and all that, but they do not believe in the resurrection. So we took an opportunity to teach Hebrews 6, one through three, the foundations of the faith, and one of those things is resurrection. I love it. Okay, uh, you've been to over 100 countries. You must have another st story from another country. And oh. I love India, by the way. We're very active in India. We sponsor 300 children in India uh, with our mutual friend, Audrey Beckett. And, and uh, tell me, where else have you been? Well, I have an exciting story about Iraq. Would that work? What? <laughs> yeah. So my sister-in-law was over there getting, helping the universities get their accreditation out of California. She invited us to Iraq and there were so many stories. But the one that really, I'd say probably the most traumatized every mission trip I've ever taken was this particular trip because we were invited to a university at Dahuk, which is northern part of Iraq, to have a, a, a cultural exchange with women there, yeah. the teachers. Well, we got there and the president of the university invited us in and gave us our two cups of tea and then invited us. He said, now we're gonna go to the women's meeting. And I said, great, let's go. We went in and there were a few women in the back, but there were professors from Cambridge and, and you know English professors sitting on the front row and the president sat down and said, okay, we're ready. I had nothing in my experience oh that my was gosh. ready to teach that kind of, you know, right. those kind of professors, yeah. you know, postgraduate things. And I just, 
I panicked because yeah. I didn't know what I was going to do. But then I remembered a thing. It's a little book called, um, uh, it's a little book from OIWAM, and it teaches you about the different cultural things of the West and the East. Yeah. And I started talking about hot and cold temperatures. Have you ever heard that? No. Oh, well, I must, it, yeah. Please, it, it, enlighten us. Yeah, it's a, a little book written by a gal from YWAM, and it teaches about the hot and cold cultures. For example, cold cultures like us, we're very private and we, are, uh, we own things, but warm cultures, anything that's owned is owned by the community. They're very community-minded. Yeah. And it's it's actually called the book is called Foreign to Familiar, and so it teaches you how to know about cultures. So I'm in the middle of this um, presentation, or I'm trying to think what I'm going to do, and I open up my uh, my uh, computer because I realize I have that teaching. I open it up, and up comes all my sermons. <laughs> So I took it off, and I thought I was going to the teaching again, foreign to familiar, but up came my sermons, and I was totally panicked. I felt like I was dancing on a pen, yeah. and finally I said, oh, don't worry, I'm just going to give it to you by heart. But under my breath, I was saying, Lord, help me remember the five things. Yeah. You know, how, what's the difference in the cultural thing? And fortunately, I met the lecturer in my uh, partner, a pastor, right over here to the left, was sitting with the desk, and... I looked over and she opened up her computer and turned it to me and gave me all the points and all the things. So I, <laughs> so I was able to do that. But then, in, after about 40 minutes, I said, gentlemen, I was expecting women. May I dismiss you so we can have an exchange with the women? And one man stood up and says, why not? Why not? Yeah. And, the, the, you know, this is all because of hot and cold culture. We have our differences. Very fascinating. And then he walked out. And as he walked out, he went like this and smiled at me and winked. And I thought, well, that was interesting. Oh. So after they left and we did our women's exchange, I asked one of the professors, a woman, I said to her, what, what does this mean when a man does this? And yeah. she says, oh, that means you're a holy person. So, oh. <laughs> so that man, he knew I was a missionary, and he was getting those men out of there for me. So Thank I praise God. God. Oh, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, we're going to take another short break, but I want to hear maybe not just some stories from the book. By the way, it's Upshift, available wherever books are sold. Uh, also, we're going to show, Lana, Lana has been showing her email below her name. Uh, we'll repeat that so you can reach out to her. Um, but I want to hear about some some conflict. Is, is there any kind of danger that the devil puts you in that the Holy Spirit got you out of right after this? This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I want to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. You know, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 2 that we are to pray for kings and all those in authority. Why? So that we can live peaceful lives in godliness and contentment. In that spirit of prayer, we have commissioned 500 commemorative Donald Trump golden coins. Each one says, in God we trust. And we will send this to you for a donation of any amount when you call us right now at 866-Obey-God or give through our website, PrayInJesusName.org. There's a limited number of these commemorative coins and why would you have this? Well, every time you look at it or feel it in your pocket, we want you to be reminded to pray for our president, especially in this election year, especially with all that's been happening in the news. We need to uplift President Donald Trump in prayer. Call us right now at 866-Obey-God and for a donation of any amount, listen, we're running out, limited supplies. Call us right now and we'll ship you a Donald Trump coin. 
Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Lana Heitley, author of Upshift, The Holy Spirit's Unfathomable Power Revealed. Uh, Janet, I've done a little bit of traveling. I'm an ex y whammer. I guess oh, once, so a, once a y whammer, always, always a y-whammer. Always a y-whammer, yeah. Right, uh, but, but more importantly, you've been everywhere that I haven't been. And, and you know, sometimes you go into what they used to call closed countries, especially in the 1040 window, right. where there's a little bit of danger from the government sometimes. Right. The government doesn't want right. Jesus. No. Have you encountered that? I have. Um, I was in Afghanistan, which was probably the hardest ministry to to really minister there. But um, by the way, I was asked to be the third wife of one of the men, and, and that's in my next book, which is coming out at Christmas, but uh, in Afghanistan. But as you know, there's a real problem there with um, Christian Christianity. So I went with a ministry that actually does uh, hospitals, hospitals and things like that. And so we ran into several issues there that God helped get us out uh, different ways. But the enemy always shows up, you know, no matter where you are. Um, and your spiritual enemy. Yes, yeah, spiritual enemy yeah. always shows up and he tries to stop what God is doing. So we've had meetings disrupted. We've been shot at. Um, one time I was in a country where I had been, where they were having a lot of cockfights and I had been out there to bring the gospel in that situation. Yeah. And as I left the building, uh, there was a big cane field and a man ran out and he was running right at me. He was very drunk and he had one of these big machetes and he was screaming, coming right at me. And the only thing I knew to do was to shout, Jesus, Jesus. And he fell down, dropped that and he ran off in the cane field. Oh my gosh. So there's, you know, he works through people yeah. and there's a lot of times we've been stopped, but then um, I can think of where the enemy tried to stop us in Sri Lanka from going north, but the army escorted us up. So we've had a lot of different. <laughs> I'm just gonna comment that, uh, you know, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, as exactly. it says in Ephesians 6, but, exactly. but against principalities, powers in, in, right. the, in this dark age, uh, you're wrestling against demonic forces inside of some people. And it's the name, certainly pushing them. The name of Jesus has more power though. Absolutely, and that's the thing I've learned. That name and the word and the blood are things that will overcome anything on the field. Um, yeah, we were in China one year and uh, the enemy almost took me out by in the middle of the night and I just started singing and confessing uh, the name of Jesus and the blood and I was literally came, uh, got healthy within a few minutes. It's kind of a long story, but there's you were always, sick. I was sick, yeah. deathly sick unto death. And I thought that I wasn't gonna come home, but wow. again, uh, the Lord showed up using his name, the word and the blood. So this reminds me of the book of Acts. I, That's I mean, exactly right. That's what one of our uh, endorsers said. Yeah. Actually in our forward it said, this is looks like the book of Acts. This is co-authored with your friend, Janet Mangum, and uh, tell me about Janet and maybe one of her stories. Janet is, uh, right now she is the transformational uh, director for Women's Aglow, but it's called Aglow International. So she has a totally separate ministry now, and she goes to a lot of countries that I don't. But, um, okay, I'll tell you one of Janet's stories. So Janet, we're in Malaysia, and uh, Janet is a, she likes to do, what do you call those when you do illustrative sermons? Janet loves illustrative sermons. So she's teaching on the woman that broke the alabaster box and the smell. And we're sitting in the congregation and suddenly I begin to smell something amazing. It was just like, I don't know, perfume that was wonderful. And I'm, you know, the girls are sitting on the front row with me and they look at me and they go, and I said, oh, you know, Janet, Everybody, you know, no status. <laughs> I figured she'd stuck something in the air conditioning system because we were in a, a conference in a hotel. Yeah. You can't do, you know, meetings publicly in Malaysia. You have to be inside. In a hotel. In a hotel. So, so after a few minutes, this thing gets stronger and stronger. And all 300 women in the place begin to slide out of their chairs. They get on the floor and they're just before the Lord. And it's like... We're not touching them, they're weeping, they're crying. The Lord is ministering to them. So it was the fragrance of the Lord that came into that room. It wasn't 
a fragrance. It, 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 was, I mean, it, it was a fragrance of God. From God, but it, it wasn't like Janet broke no, a, a, she did a bottle nothing. of perfume no. somewhere. I asked her, I said, how did you do that? She said, I didn't do anything. Oh no. <laughs> I didn't do anything. And it was so powerful. The women were so affected. They actually asked if they could have the afternoon off to be alone with the Lord and wow. just have the, it was a wonderful experience. Yeah, it's I'm one so of Janet's impressed. stories. It, you know, we have just about two minutes left. Somebody out there is inspired. I want you to encourage them and maybe lead us in prayer. Oh, I will, right now? Yes. So Father, we thank you that you are a mighty God. Lord, you do great wonders. And you also have given us assignments, Lord, to be like Jesus. So right now, I just pray for those listening and those watching, Lord, that they will understand that they have power and they have authority by the name of Jesus and by your word. And so God, I'm asking you to open doors for natural people that do supernatural things because they are yours. Father, I thank you that you're no respecter of persons. What you've done for us, you will do for anybody. We just say, thank you, God, that you have gifted us to bring people into the kingdom. Now, Lord, I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, to bring comfort and encouragement to all who are watching and let them know that they have a purpose, they have an assignment, and they have a job straight from the throne room of heaven. And we just thank you, Lord, that you are going to empower them to do exploits for you. We pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I. I sense that somebody out there, some young woman is watching this and you're gonna become a missionary mm, for Jesus. Yes. You're gonna live the life that you're hearing about and you should email yes. Lana in her website. Let's put that website up again. Is it, uh, say your website. Women Wham, women with a mission. Women Wham at AOL.com. Amen, reach out to Lana there. Uh, our website, by the way, is PrayInJesusName.org. We're asking you to please donate to help us bring you this airtime. It's very expensive, but we depend on your contributions. If you need prayer today, or if you just prayed with that woman on the, on the TV, call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's our prayer line. Call us today, 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. We'll see you next time. The Bible says this in James 1, that pure religion before God and the Father is to visit orphans and widows in their trouble. You know, we have been sponsoring up to 259 orphans and children in one of the poorest states in India for many years, but now there is a famine of biblical proportions happening because of the unemployment there. We are sponsoring people who otherwise cannot feed themselves. We've given over $10,000 to feed up to 100,000 meals to the poorest of poor in one of the poorest states in the world. We need your support. We need your financial contributions. Can you help us? There's somebody out there watching who could give $1,000 or even $10,000 toward a matching gift for what we have already provided. Please donate today. PrayInJesusName.org is our website. Or you can call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please help us feed the poor today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best financial donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now, 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.